Anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. Politics, sports, getting cut off in traffic, food orders made wrong, people insulting us or attacking our beliefs, these can send us into fits of rage. This anger could be a result of things not happening the way we planned or desired. Our anger can also be directed towards ourselves from mistakes made or failures we have had, and our anger can even be directed towards God because we are not receiving what we want or think we deserve. Physically, if we stay in a constant state of anger, it can cause negative health effects like depression, high blood pressure, headaches, digestive issues, fatigue, and may eventually lead to a stroke or heart attack. Spiritually, if we stay in a constant state of anger, it damages our relationships. We start pushing those who love us out of our lives. I mean, who wants to hang around someone who's mad all the time? The more we embrace this self-centered anger, we also start pulling further away from God and start being influenced more by the devil. Paul puts it this way, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Many times throughout my life, I have chosen to live in anger, whether as a child and not knowing who my biological father was, or getting bullied at school for years. As an adult, it was being cheated on twice, being stabbed in the back by those supposed to be close to me, being overlooked for promotions at work, or even having a church turn their back on me all because of the lies of an ex. There were times I was hating on myself for my failures as a son, as a friend, and especially all my failures as a Christian due to the sins I chose to commit. It's easy to get mad and even easier to stay mad, but this is not how we are to live our lives as believers in Jesus. So what do we do? We must remove anger from our hearts. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now, yes, I know it's easier said than done, but you must get this point. It is our choice to live in anger or to live in peace and freedom. The next verse shows us how. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. The key to living your life in peace and freedom is choosing to live selflessly, forgiving those who have wronged you, forgiving yourself for your own mistakes, and trusting that God knows what he is doing and to wait patiently for him to enact his plans in your life. You cannot control how others treat you, and you cannot control all the negative circumstances in your life, but you can control how you respond to those struggles and to those who hurt you. Dear God, let us be reminded of how you forgave us of our sins and to extend that forgiveness to those who have hurt us and even to ourselves. And please increase our faith and our trust in you as we wait for you to move in our lives. We ask all of this so we can live in peace and the freedom that you have called us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.